I realize that uh, the idea of making a knife sharpener out of a Harbor Freight one inch by 30 inch belt sander is not a unique idea, but I'm going to show you a few of the uh, little roadblocks that I came to and uh, what I did to work around. Uh, the first thing is, obviously I replaced the motor. I took the AC, uh, what, 1800 RPM motor off that came on the belt sander from Harbor Freight and I replaced it with this PSI woodworking DC motor. That was the source, was uh, PSI woodworking. And uh, the model number is a TCLVSKIT2. So uh, it's a variable speed direct current. Comes with a speed controller here. First off, the shaft on the stock motor is 14 millimeter and it's got a flat side to key it on the drive wheel. Um, the shaft on this direct current motor is exactly 15 millimeter right on the button. So what I did is I had a friend lathe a piece of aluminum and then put it on the drill press and I drilled it out to 15 millimeters on the button and took some emery cloth and sanded it out just a little bit. Um, it was still a real tight fit. I heated it up real hot with my heat gun and slipped it on. And so it's kind of a, kind of a thermal fit on there, I guess you would call it. And then I drilled and tapped for a set screw here um, the other thing that was an issue was the mounting holes are different on uh, this DC motor than the stock AC motor. This comes with a template. It's actually, uh, uh, it comes with a paper template and it comes with a metal handle that can be used as a template. Um, if you look at this kit go online and look at the kit you'll see what i'm talking about anyway the metal template works perfect to lay on here and mark your holes for the mounting there's three three different mounting points on this motor and uh i just i just used a uh, pan head screw with a fender washer in there to kind of spread out the uh, stress on here. And also because this motor is so long, so it's not pulling on that, I put a little adjustable leg underneath there. It's just a shaft with a nut and a spacer and a little piece of rubber that, that kind of cradles it. And that way I could adjust it up exactly to where it started to lift a little bit to take the stress off. Um, the other thing that I did, the lead that goes from the controller to the motor, uh, was about 30 inches long and it had a connector and I just, I didn't want to have a big bundle of wire coiled up here. So I eliminated the lead coming out of the controller and used the lead coming out of the motor and just wired it directly in to the board in here. And where that DC motor connects to the board, there are two spade connectors where it goes onto the PCB board. And you can reverse the direction on the motor by reversing those two leads on the board. And that's what I did. So this belt is moving away. Um, I imagine you could put a double pull, double throw switch on there if you wanted to, and, you know, on, off, on switch, and uh, be able to control the uh, direction. But I, I wanted this 
moving away, so I went ahead and reversed the leads inside here. It was just a matter of uh, grabbing it with uh, needle nose pliers and and uh, swapping the position of the two uh, spade connectors on the board. It's very very straightforward, and uh, obviously this uh, entire contraption is mounted on a cutting board. It's about a uh, what is it? Probably about uh, half an inch thick, maybe uh, maybe three eighths. Anyway, um, that worked out real good. Um, I just uh, uh, counter counter sink uh, on the bottom side for the connectors so they're not sticking down below, and uh, it it sits flat on the uh, surface here doesn't skate around uh, the other thing that I did that was a little bit different from what I've seen other people do uh, I drilled out the end of the shaft here and tapped it out this is a standard three inch uh, hook and loop backed buffing wheel attachment for a rotary buffer and uh, I just drilled and tapped and it screws on and the direction of uh, uh, rotation on this is perfect so that it, it keeps it tight. I've, I've tightened it in there, but it, it as you can see, the, the direction that it rotates will, will keep it tight. I just... Uh, the shaft was sticking out here, and I thought, well, what, what can I do with that? And I, I had this little buffing wheel kicking around in, in the shop here, so uh, I threw that on. Um, the other thing that I did, the spring that comes in here in the stock configuration is very weak. Uh, I replaced the spring in here. I, this is actually... Uh, two springs. It's a smaller one inside of a larger spring, so it's kind of a dual rate setup, and it creates a little bit more force. And I also put a couple of nylon washers here behind this pivot. Uh, this, in the stock configuration, this this tensioner tends to hang up. It, it's not smooth, so. By putting the nylon washer behind here, it, it's nice and smooth and, and it doesn't hang up at all. And uh, there's also a little, a little pocket here that the spring goes into. There was uh, some excess from the molding process that was sticking out there. You take your, uh, your Dremel and remove that. Um, it on on some applications that that little pocket and and that mold excess can get in the way of this wheel and uh, create noise and uh, also impair the movement of the wheel um, the bearings these are the stock bearings on all of these idler wheels here and uh, they seem to be okay at this point. I imagine they can be replaced in the future. And of course, this is a, just a, a widely available angle guide here that slips right over the backing plate. And uh, I've got the adjust uh, the uh, Allen wrench here for the adjustment on the backing plate stuck on onto a magnet back here and that magnet kind of helps uh, collect some of the dust particles uh, let's see what else I think that's pretty much it
about the only other thing that uh, I haven't done that I'll mention is I've got to put some type of a breathable fabric over this. As you can see, the back side of the uh, circuit board is exposed there, and I wouldn't want uh, metal shavings to collect on there and short anything out, so I'll, I'll put some kind of a fabric on there that the air can still circulate, but it'll keep keep any debris from getting in there. Um, that's probably the only drawback to mounting this control board so close, but uh, um, for the purpose of portability and keep you know keeping everything together, I wanted to mount this and and have it here as one unit. I you know I've I've got a big workbench here, but it's never enough space and when I'm not using this it's got to be put away and it just makes it easier if everything's mounted on one board. It's just a, a handier com more compact unit than having that control board out floating around on the end of a three foot cord. So let's see here. Tip it up here so you can see the uh, what I did here on the underside. Oh I mounted the control board. I just basically uh, drilled and tapped the plastic out and put a, a coarse thread eighth inch uh, machine bolt in there and those attachments for the unit are uh, basically uh, they're like a, a threaded rivet style affair and uh, those two points there that you see uh, that are lighter colored circles. That's the, uh, I, I drilled out and countersink for the uh, bolts. There's two bolts that hold the unit onto the plate and they stick down off the bottom. So I just drilled out a, a space for those to sit. So the thing would sit flush. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Um, the motor, when I purchased it, was available, let's see, I got it directly from PSI, and I believe I paid $138 when I purchased it. Um, the price seems to fluctuate where you, where you purchase it and, and the time, um, I've, I've seen it. Uh, last time I looked, I think it was up to $170, but still when you, when you factor in the, uh, 45 bucks for the, uh, uh, sander itself from Harbor Freight and, you know, 150 bucks, let's say average for the motor, uh, compared to a similar unit, if you were to buy it ready made, you know, a variable speed, uh, belt sharpener unit. Um, it's pretty inexpensive and, uh, I've used this, I've had it set up now a little over a month and I've used it extensively and nothing here creates, is heating up the, the motor, the controller, everything stays cool regardless of the speed and the motor is very torquey. I've, I've had no problem, uh, with pulling the motor down. It, it is very torquey. And uh, of course, there is a wide variety of belts available for the one inch by 30 inch configuration. You know, I've got everything here from uh, uh, Scotch Bright uh, belts to leather stropping belts, uh, 250 grit all the way up to uh, 60 grit and everything in between. And uh, I might mention I purchased my belts from uh, Curry Custom Cutlery, I believe was the name of it. It's uh, Cliff Curry. He's located over in the islands in Hawaii and uh, seems to be a real nice, knowledgeable guy. And uh, has a good selection of these belts at a good price and quick quick shipping 
and uh, just a, a good good guy to deal with as far as belts. And uh, from time to time, he also has uh, some items for this. He has listed the uh, drive wheel, although it's out of stock currently, but on his website, he does have the uh, drive wheel, which uh, is bored out for 15 millimeter on his website, even though the last time I checked, it was in a back order situation. And I think he might even have these idler wheels, which have been, uh, according to his website, they've been upgraded with uh, a higher quality bearing. And he claims uh, that he has trued up the wheels too. So uh, just thought I would mention that. Anyway, that's that's my uh, Harbor Freight 1 inch by 30 inch belt sander conversion into a knife sharpener. Uh, hope maybe uh, this has given you some ideas or spurred you to do something similar. 